ladies and gentlemen, welcome everyone uh, to the January 26th meeting of the Gross Hill Township Board of Trustees. Let's uh, call the meeting to order at 7.50. We're a little delayed because of a study session that ran, as usual, a little bit longer. This I'll uh, call the meeting to order. Let's begin with the Pledge of Allegiance. The Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, once again, thanks for your attendance. Uh, we have a full board tonight. We can conduct meeting as, uh, as planned. At this time, I'll look for additions, deletions to tonight's agenda. And I'm going to propose two of them, and I think I'm the only one still proposing. So... Uh, First, I'll be asking for is to uh, beg the board's indulgence to add a short presentation. I'd like to introduce Mr. Uh, Kenneth Johnson L., uh, uh, representing, uh, representing State Senator Coleman Young. And now that we are in the first State Senate district rather than the seventh, we have our uh, new State Senator. And I'll let Mr. Johnson L. Uh, like, uh, introduce us to what we can look forward to. Uh, so I move we add a, a, a presentation. Support. Okay. Uh, those in favor of adding uh, uh, Mr. Johnson L's presentation, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? That will be added. And the next, I'm adding, asking for the board to add, which will become action item number three, um, a resolution to support the city of Trenton in getting the former McLeod DSC site on the national priorities list. Support. Okay. Uh, so Again, uh, supported by uh, Trustee Budney on the resolution. Are there any other additions or deletions to the agenda tonight? Okay, with none offered, those in favor of approving the agenda as amended, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? The agenda stands amended. Uh, with that, Mrs. Boyd, Ms. Boyd, we'll uh, step to the public <coughs> hearing. Good evening. This is our second of two public hearings on CDBG funds, um, which are Community Development Block Grant. And I'll just kind of give a brief overview like I did last time and then entertain any questions from the audience or the trustees. Um, CDBG um, is a Community Development Block Grant. It is um, housed in the um, Department of Housing and Urban Development. Um, it's a grant program that has very specific guidelines as to what and how the money is spent. Um, it's meant to um, benefit low and moderate low income people, uh, benefit low and moderate low income limited clientele, so people with special needs, um, basically the most vulnerable people in our communities. Um, and then it has um, other particular, um, if there's something urgent in a com community, um, and it also addresses slum and blight housing issues. Um, with that, there's um, an anticipated amount of money that um, each community is um, given um, at the beginning of the year. And what um, each community does is um, apply for how their allocations can be spent. And then it goes through a process, and sometimes there's a little bit of an adjustment. Um, we have not had too many adjustments, but unfortunately last year there was there was some updated census information, um, and we did lose um, about $22,000 from previous year's funding. So when um, my predecessor, Mr. Rooney, um, approached and got um, projects approved last year, um, there was um, a portion of it um, that we um, did not receive the full amount. So um, that um, section of money was not used last year. Um, what he had applied for was some ADA improvements to the parking lots at Centennial Farm and then a lift for our community van. Um, and since there was not enough money to do the parking lot and um, it didn't seem warranted to put a lift into a van that had over 100,000 miles on it. Um, we decided not to spend any of that money. And by we, I mean people before me <laughs> decided not to spend um, the money prior. <laughs> um, money because um, we just needed to kind of reallocate and redecide how we wanted to spend the money. Um, we have talked with the people from Oakland County um, through the Community Development Housing 
um, program and there has been some back and forth whether um, a van could be purchased um, for a period of time. I know Mr. Rooney tried very many times to get a van approved and they denied it. Well, the new regime that is there um, has looked over the paperwork and they do feel a van for a community program um, is available for a grant money. So um, with the information that you have, um, I'll go over um, how we, we apply for three different programming areas. Um, the first is senior programming, and we um, are allocated about $28,000. That helps offset our senior programming, our Meals on Wheels, our um, community van program, um, and that includes program and some staffing expenses. Um, the other area is Senior Alliance, which is about um, just under two thousand dollars. It's seventeen fifty, um, and that is a nonprofit program through Wayne County that thirty four communities um, participated, and they provide additional um, services that local communities cannot. Um, we do Meals on Wheels, but they do more extensive um, meal programming. Um, they also, we have a community transportation program, but they do more extensive, um, like if someone has a weekly or daily medical trip or appointment that we can't undertake, um, they provide excess um, special circumstances, um, emergency prescriptions, so programs that we can't necessarily help, um, so we do um, support that program. And then the last area is ADA improvements, and that's where we took um, our largest hit last year. Um, and we were given up approximately 22000 less than what we had. So this year we'll be allocated 15000 just like we were last year. So um, our hope is to use the $15,000 from last year, the $15,000 that will be allocated this year, and put that towards a van for our um, community transportation program. Mm, I if anyone has any questions. Um, Brandy, uh, you said for the senior program it was 28000 yes. I have 24 down here. Uh, I'm sorry, that's probably a typo on um, the, the legislation is correct. It is 24000 okay. Yep, sorry about that. No, it's okay. Uh, on the, as far as the looking into the van, yes. Are, uh, have we ha, is part of looking at what we need the history? I mean, are we are we taking our actual history of what we need? Isn't you know? I mean, or are we gonna? I just want to make sure we're not gonna overbuy or underbuy. Right. We're not looking at a luxury van or anything. But no. Well, we I'm th as far as size, I mean, right. you can get huge. And if you're only taking a couple of people, you don't need that. And that's right. We want to be able to, um, obviously, day to day, we don't transfer 15 or 20 people. But on certain days, we have higher um, needs. Um, but we're not looking. We're looking at something that's very easy for senior and less mobile people to get in and out of. That's a big concern. And then being able to um, transport people who are in wheelchairs. So. Thank you. Okay, other questions, comments for Mrs. for Miss Boyd. All right, with that, we'll uh, thank you, Miss Boyd. Okay. Miss Boyd is our recreation director, and uh, moving forward with the with the block grant. So, thank you once again. Thank that you. will uh, <coughs> close the public hearing. We will reconvene to the regular meeting at this time. I uh, the treasurer points out I have to open. <laughs> The public hearing to public commentary. <laughs> You're rushing me so, away. Like, okay. <laughs> so, if, if any public comment, any public questions for Ms. Boyd? All right, with that offered, then. Pardon? From the public. public. <laughs> you got to quit hiding behind me. I can't see him. Yeah, maybe. Okay, with, uh, with, no, with no questions offered, then uh, we will close the public hearing and reconvene to the regular meeting. Thank okay. you, Ms. Boy. Well, do you want me to stay because it's nope. the first on the... Nope, we're, uh, okay. we're, we're moving on to the... You've done your part. Okay, We're moving you. on to the rest of the meeting. All right, with that, uh, per my request to the board, I'm going to invite Mr. Kenneth johnson L, the man office manager or... or district manager. District, I'm sorry, district no, manager fine. for our state senator Coleman Young and uh, Mr. Johnson, I'll please introduce yourself and what we have looked forward to with Senator Young. Good, good. Good evening everyone. Good evening. As you already stated, I'm Kenneth johnson Hill, district manager for your state senator Coleman Alexander Young II. 
I bring you greetings from his office. We'd like to thank you for putting us back in office. Wish you a happy new year. Just on informational notes, uh, the senator is on appropriations, insurance, and local government. So those are the three committees that he'll be on. And he's also the assistant floor leader. So we're just coming out, building relations. If there's anything you guys need from us, you just have to let me know. I'll leave my contact. Right now, it's just our introduction. We want to get acquainted with how you guys operate. Our office is here for you. I already had meetings with your uh, supervisor, Bryant. So we're just coming down. We're making our office available. If there's anything we can do for you, just let us know. And that's pretty much, we don't have anything other than what I'm sure everyone knows is the roads. That's the big, I don't, I don't know how you guys look at it, but that's the big issue coming out of Lansing right now, the, uh, the May initiative for the roads. And how that will work is um, if they vote it in, it'll take, I'm sure you already know, it'll take a year to collect it then another year to figure out how they're going to divvy up that to the contractors. And it's possible that the legislative body that we have in place probably won't even be the legislative body that will uh, take care of that matter. So those are just the biggest issues. If you got any questions, some of you just ask me, it's probably in my head. Yeah, I've got a question. You said that if it passes, it'll take a couple of years. Because they have to collect <clears throat> it. <clears throat> to collect it. The that doesn't mean we can't spend it. I would think that we could bond out that money knowing that it's revenue. Well, that's, that's if they choose to proceed. You got to, if they desire to go that way, but it's going to be looking at a two year. We, we're two years out on roads from the collecting and the contracts. Well, so well, I don't that, want people to think that once we vote this in in May that roads be getting fixed. Well, I would think two years would be a, a real drag on yeah. every community. And I would think that with a little forward thinking, and maybe I should have this conversation with some other members, but with a little forward thinking, I would think that once it's been voted in, we have the ability to collect, and we could certainly move forward on some bonding issues, some long-term bonding issues to get some of this work done, knowing that the funds are going to be available through tax collection, the same as we do it here. Right. Well, you know... Uh, what is, okay, Mr. Van. Van Oss, yeah. <laughs> Man, Mr. Van Oss, hopefully, we, you know, I don't want to project, but as it's stated, as it's, it's looking, it's going to take a year for them to collect it. I don't think they're going to jump off with your ideas. But, hey, maybe those are some ideas that you can present. But as it stands, we're looking at two years out for roads. Maybe some things could change. Maybe it couldn't. But just being honest with you, we still two years out. Just okay. being honest. All right. Thank you. All right. We got two here. My name's a little tougher than Van Oss. <laughs> I'm Wally Posey asking. Hey, Wally. Uh, your comment about the roads being two years out. Am I of the under? I'm of the understanding that there has been additional funding placed already this year, and that we will see some increased over last year. Some more road work <coughs> compared to what had occurred last year. There has been. Some some funding. The county funding. The county funding. Yes. So this is, oh, so, this is state. Oh, you, you're talking. Yeah, state I'm talking about the state. The uh, proposal in May. They the sales tax the, increase. The yeah. They, yeah. they took it to the community, so we have to vote on it uh -huh. and see if we want to raise that from the six to yeah. seven. I, I'm and just I, I just worry that people will throw up their hands in defeat if they don't think anything's happening, and there there are some things happening, but it'll happen slow. We'll ramp up. Right, and roads are like 19%, uh, so they're terrible. And the senator is aware of all this. He's fighting hard on it. We wanted him to get it done in December, but they came up with the May initiative, so we got to take it to the polls. So, you know, and I keep everyone posted. We're just getting going. 90 days from now, I'll come back, and we'll see where we're at. But I plan on attending your meetings. And I'll get the senator out as well when, you know, time permits. Because, like you're saying, it's rough up there. So we're fighting hard, but we just don't want to give you false information. I don't want you to think the roads is going to be a big... A lot of people thinking that once we vote it in, hey, smooth rolling, 
It's not, it's not <laughs> going to go like that. Just being honest. Okay. Understood. Oh, okay, Mr. Thomas, right. Yeah, uh, John, Johnson Elk, correct? You got it. I got 30 years in steel, so my ears aren't. Excuse me. Uh, we're a small little community. Right. Uh, surrounded by water. We have virtually zero industry on this island. So every tax dollar uh, that's collected comes from our residents. Right. Everything that we own, uh, be it police, okay. be it fire, schools. Oh, I'm sorry. Apologize for that. So everything that we own has been bought and paid for out of our tax dollars. Uh, we need help with our roads, as right. every community in this in, in, in Michigan needs currently. Uh, where well, there's one road in particular that every school bus that services the elementary schools travels down four times a day. The road is in such terrible, such a terrible state of repair that uh, my my concern is for the safety of these children. That one of these days, uh, a school bus on a, on a wet or, or snowy, icy day is going to end up in a ditch with injured children. Uh, on a personal note, two years is just too long. We, no, we need, our voice needs to be heard uh, loudly and, and quickly. And uh, we're no different than any other community in, in this, in this uh, state, uh, road-wise. But uh, we, need, we need the state's help, and we need it sooner, you know, sooner than later. So I just wanted to you know, pass it on to you, right. but we need your help. I'll deliver all this to the senator. Thank you. And we'll work it out. For the Republican-run state, <laughs> is there any more, any more? I don't know. Do you? Because that's my no, first. Just this is just between. Oh, okay, good, good. With the board, you don't engage the public. All right. Any uh, any other comments, questions for Mr. Johnson? Now? All right. With that, uh, I want to give my regards to uh, Senator Young and uh, look forward to seeing him again. All right. All right. Thank you. Thank you so much. All right. With that. Uh, We'll move on to the consent agenda, Mr. Treasurer. Yeah, Mr. Supervisor, I'd like to make a motion to approve consent agenda 14-116, which includes the approval of the minutes of the January 12, 2015 regular meeting and the approval of the check register dated, dated January 23, 2015. Support. support. Okay, we got moved by Treasurer Van Oss, seconded by uh, Clerk Ranka. Uh, discussion among the board on the consent agenda. <coughs> All right, with none offered, those in favor of approving the consent agenda as published, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? None offered. Uh, the consent agenda stands approved. With that, we'll move into action items. I'm sorry, we'll move into public comment on the action items. We now have a third action item. Is there any public comment on tonight's action items? Mr. Zelasco. Um, will you expand? So, I'm sorry, will you expand on that and read <coughs> the tactical move is to get our approval to support Trenton. Is that the one you're talking about? I will. Yeah, okay, thank Okay. For those who didn't pick it up or if it didn't get recorded, Mr. Zelasco uh, wanted to be reassured that we would be reading the uh, resolution, and I'll read both of them. I'll read Trenton's and then the resolution that uh, I'm asking the board to support or to forward in support of Trenton. And that gives as much background information as time permits. Uh, okay, with that, let's move on to action items and uh, action item number one, which would be Rex, so Mr. Molesto. Um, could you read that to me, Brian, please? Sound. Pardon? Sound. Right. I'm <laughs> All right, here, here it goes. I apologize. Uh, the agenda is <clears throat> to approve application for the uh, Fiscal year of 2015 through 2016 community development block grant program. Um, proposed motion uh, is to, uh, based on a recommendation of the recreation director, the Grosse Hill Township Board authorizes the recreation department to seek grant funding from Wayne County Community Development Division for the following fiscal year, 2015-2016. Uh, these are the community, um, let me get this right, the community development block uh, grants. Uh, Township-wide senior programs at $24,000. Township-wide senior alliance, $1,750. And then ADA improvements, which would be a community van at $15,021.04 for a total of $40,771.04. 40, 
support. Okay, uh, move, moved by Trustee Malvesto and seconded first by Treasurer Van Oss. Uh, we have the background. We've, Mrs. Uh, Miss Boyd gave us all the background on it. I think we're pretty well versed. Are there any yep. further questions either among the board or of uh, Miss Boyd before we move on this? Okay, there's none offered from the board. Those in favor of authorized direct department to seek grant funding from Wayne County Community Development Division for the aforementioned 2015-2016 Community Development Block Grant projects totaling $40,771.04. Roll call. Roll call, please. Roll call vote on this issue. That's, thank you, Mrs. Gray. Um, I'll begin with Trustee Posey Ask. Aye. Uh, Trustee Smith. Aye. Trustee Budney. Aye. Trustee Malvesto. Aye. Clerk Ranka. Aye. Treasurer Van Oss. Aye. Okay, Supervisor Loftus, aye. All aye. Motion carries. Thank you for your work on that, Ms. Boyd. Thank you, Tom. Uh, action item number two, Ms. Smith. Uh, thank you, Mr. Supervisor. I would like to recommend to the board that they approve the appointment of Ms. Betty Ruck to the Communication Commission for the term length of January 6, uh, 26, 2015 to March 31st, 2015, based upon the recommendation of the Communications Commission. Support. Okay, moved by Trustee Smith, uh, seconded by Trustee Budney. Any discussion among the board on the appointment of Mrs. Ruck? Or I said Mrs. I might have been out of line. I'll refer to her as Ms. Ruck. Mrs. Okay. Thank you, Mrs. Walker. All right. With uh, with no d discussion among the board, uh, those in favor of the approval of Mrs. Ruck to the Communication Commission for the term specified, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. None offered. Mrs. Ruck, thank you for volunteering. Look forward to uh, more good work. And third action item, the requesting the Grosse Township Board of Trustees Approve the resolution supporting the city of Trenton. I'll read the resolution if it's seconded. Second. Okay, moved by the supervisor, seconded by Trustee uh, Budney. Resolution of support for the city of Trenton. I will read Trenton's. I hope I have it in this pile. Okay, Trenton's resolution. This is, as we're all aware, the uh, McLeod DSC site has been an eyesore. It's, uh, it's, it's a mess. And... The city of Trenton's been working diligently trying to get the owners to clean it up, either to sell it to new owners who will clean it up, but to abate the uh, the blight is there and hopefully turn that parcel into productive real estate once again. Uh, I know their frustration level. Uh, <coughs> I'm sorry, the township manager and I have met with them, with uh, city officials from both Riverview and Trenton several times, and they're really getting stonewalled. Uh, city of Trenton. Uh, passed a resolution earlier this month. I'm going to read this resolution to you, and I'm hoping the board will support with our resolution. So the City of Trenton's resolution is, whereas the City of Trenton has within its corporate boundaries an approximately 199-acre site formerly occupied for 50 years by a steel mill operated by McLeod Steel Corporation, which site has a lengthy history of contamination adversely affecting the prospects of redevelopment, and whereas the property was subsequently acquired out of the bankruptcy of McLeod Steel by the Trenton Land Holdings, LLC, <coughs> also known as the Detroit Steel Corporation L Company, LLC, otherwise known as DSC, and whereas DSC has been unable to resurrect the integrated steel operation of McLeod into a viable and productive enterprise, leaving an unsightly and contaminated collection of dilapidated buildings, abandoned rail track, and piles of scrap, littering the landscape adjacent to the city and along the Detroit River, an international waterway connecting the Great Lakes, and whereas reclamation plans by private developers have failed because of the costs associated with the environmental cleanup of the site. Now, therefore, be it resolved, the City of Trenton does hereby petition the Honorable Rick Snyder, Governor of the State of Michigan, to support and endorse the addition of the former McLeod Steel sites, including those located at 1491 West Jefferson Avenue, Trenton, Michigan, now owned by Trenton Land Holdings, LLC, to the national priorities list. Be it further resolved that this petition be served on the governor and legislature of the state of Michigan, the Michigan Department of, Vi of Environmental Quality Remediation and Redevelopment Division, and the County of Wayne, and be it further resolved that the mayor and city clerk are hereby authorized and directed to execute and immediately deliver this resolution of the city of Trenton to the person and entities identified above, adopted, approved, and passed by the city council of the city of Trenton this 5th day of January, 
2015, signed by uh, Kyle Stack Mayor and Deborah Devitt, the Deputy City Clerk. Uh, my conversations with uh, Mr. Wagner and Mayor Stack, we're in this together. We Normally the three communities had been meeting, Trenton, Riverview, Gros Seal, on particularly on this issue. Um, I asked Jim if he wanted our support on it. He, all this, he wants all the support he can get, which is our, our best avenue for loosening up some federal funds to get this site cleaned up. So I'm asking the board to approve this resolution entitled uh, Resolution of Support for the City of Trenton. Whereas the City of Trenton has within its boundaries the former McLeod Steel Corporation site, now owned by Trenton Land Holdings, LLC, a.k.a. Detroit Steel Company, uh, LLC, and whereas this property is located on the bank of the Trenton Channel of the Detroit River, an international waterway connecting the Great Lakes, lying due west and within a quarter mile of Gross Hill Township, and whereas the township of Gross Hill is adversely affected by both waterborne and airborne contaminants emanating from the contaminated McLeod DSC site, and whereas reclamation plans by private developers have failed because of the costs associated with the environmental cleanup of the site, and whereas the City Council of Trenton, City of Trenton did on January 5th, 2015, formally resolve to petition the Go Governor Snyder to add the McLeod DSC site to the national priorities list. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the Gross Hill Township Board of Trustees does hereby join with the City of Trenton in petitioning the Honorable Rick Snyder, Governor of the State of Michigan, to support and endorse the addition of the McLeod DSC site on the national priorities list. And be it further resolved, that this resolution of support be served upon the governor and the legislature of the state of Michigan, the Michigan Department of Environmental Quality, Remediation, and Redevelopment Division, and the Charter County of Wayne, and adopted, approved, and passed by the Gross Hill Township Board of Trustees during a public meeting on January 26, 2015, presupposing it passes. Questions, comments from the board? I think we'll... I, I think we need to move on this. Hopefully, we'll get some results and uh, just, oh, I'm sorry, Mr. Posiask. Yeah, just a comment on the site itself. The other companies up and down the river have taken great steps in cleaning up the Detroit Riverfront from above Belle Isle down to all the way through and including Humbug Marsh. Uh, I provided services in a previous occupation to the site that we now know as the McLeod site, as we're referring to. It is a serious environmental situation. Uh, and we're, we're talking about hazardous wastes on the ground in thousand yards quantities. Uh, they're there. Nobody's taken them away. Uh, there are all of the issues that a defunct steel mill could contribute. And uh, I, I would urge my fellow board members here to, to support this with great resolution and, and see what we can do to push our weight behind it. We've we got to clean it up. It's affecting our river. Thank you, Trust Trustee Posiask. Other questions, comments from the board? All right, with none offered, those in favor of supporting the, uh, the yeah, of supporting the city of Trenton, Trenton via this resolution, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? None offered, passes unanimously. And thank you to the board. <coughs> With that, act today was being completed. Clerk's report. Clerk Rank. <clears throat> Mr. Supervisor, we'll start off by uh, saying that there is going to be a, a May election, and uh, we are always in search of election inspectors. So if you are interested in working for the, uh, as an election, election inspector, <laughs> an election inspector for the May election, please contact uh, the clerk's office either by phone uh, or feel free to visit the website or stop by in person. Um, in addition to that, there's been some FOIA changes, or there are, or there are some upcoming FOIA changes, which is the Freedom of Information Act. Uh, there's an article in the Free Press on Sunday detailing what the changes are. Uh, essentially, this is a standardization of fees that the state of Michigan will charge, or will, will basically uh, standardize, standardize across all local entities of government. Our current uh, per copy fee is $0.25 cent per copy. The new fee, effective January, or July 1st, will be $0.10 cents per copy. Uh, the labor rate will be roughly the same um, that we have today, other than uh, we will not be able to charge benefits. And the labor rate is essentially we are obliged to charge the lowest um, or the rate of the lowest um, paid employee capable of fulfilling the request. In addition to that, there are some standardized fees for 
um, any kinds of consultants that are required to interact with your FOIA requests. So if you've got lawyers or uh, you know planners, for example, there's uh, standardized fees for those. So I don't see this being a major impact on on Grozeal, and we we are aware of the law, and we'll make our changes um, to to coincide with the law taking effect this July. That's all I have. Okay, thank you, Clerk Rankin. Mr. Treasurer. Uh, <clears throat> thank you, Mr. Supervisor. <clears throat> For the month of December, Gross Seal had a total of $16,913,491 invested in various accounts. These accounts generated a total of uh, $3,118.42. The rate is all the way up to 0.28%. It is getting better, as sad as that sounds. The current breakdown of these investments are now available on my website. You can see where all the cash is. The Treasurer's Office, uh, Gross Seal Winter Property Taxes are due February 17th without penalty. A 3% penalty will be added on unpaid winter tax dues after that date, March 1st, and then that date, all the unpaid taxes, summer and winter, will become delinquent and must be paid to the county with further penalty. Now, I will strongly urge anybody listening to get your taxes paid here because you do not want to go down to Wayne County. Trust me. <clears throat> that politician saying trust me, right? <laughs> <laughs> but I can guarantee you that will be an experience you won't want to repeat. Uh, <clears throat> Pet tags are available through at Township Hall. Uh, pet tag fees will increase from six dollars, <throat> excuse me, to twelve dollars on February first. Uh, be, be sure to bring proof of your rabies vaccination. Uh, Mike, we got a meeting Tuesday the, 17th. Tuesday the 17th for the Commerce Park Commission. I urge you to attend if you want to know what's happening. You will, <clears throat> if anybody's had a chance to look at the progress of the building the other end of this hangar. Uh, we are now getting the windows installed. We have a tenant that's scheduled to get in there as soon as we finish our project. Uh, you'll notice a major, major improvement on that building. Really happy with the outcome at this point. Uh, our next step will be heating and cooling of that building and putting in some plumbing for uh, the tenant to utilize while he's in there. But the whole facility has been leased. And that's all I have. And that is a heck of a success story. I'm, I'm, it's, it's, I'm just tickled that we're getting that done. Um, okay. Uh, trustee reports. Mr. Posey, yes. Thank you, Mr. Supervisor. Uh, uh, just a report of an upcoming meetings. Greenways Open Space will be, t meetings will be taking place next week, Tuesday at 7 o'clock p.m. We do have a vacancy on that commission and would love you to entertain it. Uh, our bike path meeting uh, for this month is done, and our next one will be the first Tuesday of next month. And as I have said in the past, there's a lot of discussion about path repairs and funding. And uh, your input is really appreciated to see where you want these bike paths to go this, this coming year and the next couple of years. End of my report. Thank you, Mr. Posiask. Uh, Mr. Budney. Uh, thank you, Mr. Supervisor. Uh, very quickly, next DPS meeting, where we will probably be talking about our roads. Uh, it'll be February 10th, uh, the second Tuesday of the month, with no ZBA meeting this, uh, this month. Um, I just wanted to say something. Uh, uh, we've been getting some inquiries, uh, being that it's winter and we have snow. Uh, we've been getting some calls uh, from residents uh, regarding other residents not cleaning their sidewalks. And uh, it's been interesting because uh, they've gone from they haven't cleaned them to they have are supposed to be cleaning them within X number of hours of snow stopping uh, from falling. <coughs> And I just wanted to let everybody know that uh, Grozeal actually does not have a, any uh, uh, ordinance that requires the removal of snow. So please don't call us with those. <laughs> or let me know where you found out <laughs> that uh, they had to be cleaned within a couple hours of snow stopping. Uh, but uh, uh, Grozeal does not have, uh, have an ordinance saying that uh, you have to necessarily 
remove the snow from your sidewalk. And that's it. Oh, I'm sure we'll hear more. I'm uh, sure we will. <laughs> yeah, thank you, Mr. Betty. Mrs. Smith. Uh, thank you, Mr. Supervisor. Just a couple of things of note. I know in the past we've talked here in regards to the to the audio quality here at, at the board level. Um, I know at the last Communications Commission meeting, the department had um, Ted Fournier mentioned that he's received three different bids um, from organizations who have come here on site and kind of done an evaluation. Um, it looks like that will be then passed to the Communications Commission for their review and then passed back to us. And it looks like we probably won't see that till or we'll see it before the next budget year, but it probably won't hit the next, the budget till next year. Um, as far as the next couple of meetings, um, next Communications Commission meeting will be on Wednesday the 11th at 6 p.m. Is that right, Kathy? 6 p.m.? 5.30 p.m., my bad. And then Island Fest, uh, February 18th at 7. And then I wanted to say Happy New Year because I was not at the last meeting. That's Thank you, Mr. Smith. Mr. Malesto. Mr. Supervisor, uh, I don't have anything this evening. Uh, I just want to say that I've been uh, a little bit out of, not a little bit, I've been out of commission for the last couple months. Uh, so I did not make our, uh, our rec commission meeting uh, that was held just recently. But I will be meeting with uh, Brandy Boyd and we're going to be going over uh, the rec department. Uh, next time around, I, I hope to have a, uh, a plate full to, uh, to bring you know, before the board here. So apologize, but thank you. Hey, thank you, Mr. Melvesto. Um, guess I'm up. Been nice and quiet, kind of the way I like it. We've got a couple events coming up. Uh, the Daddy Daughter Dance is on February 6th and Mother's Son Night of February 20th. Uh, tickets again, Rec Department, Brandy, 676-2364. Uh, six, 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 uh, Tails, their bottle and can drive, you might have seen this advertised, but their bottle and can drive is running now through February 28th. It's real easy to gather up your uh, returnables, leave them in the dog kennel area at the animal shelter and Centennial Farm. Comes a donation that helps Tails and the Gross Seal Animal Shelter. It's just the, uh, the other residents of Gross Seal, the, some of the, the four-legged ones. So again, uh, a little side trip. It's actually easier to drop them off there than to return them. Um, it, it, it all adds up, it does help. <coughs> and. I guess the only other announcement is we're going to be closed on President's Day in February. I think Dale knows more details than that, so I'm going to ask him to pick up where I'm leaving off. That concludes my report. Thank you, Mr. Supervisor. Um, one item I'd like to add is to um, re remind the board that you've been invited to a study session with the Community Recreation Commission this Thursday at 7.30. Um, the rowing club will be um, giving us a presentation on some grant opportunities, grant opportunities and some possible partnering possibilities. So I know s some of you are available and some of you are not. It will be right here. Okay. Right here, 730, correct? Okay. So nothing further. Okay, thank you. Uh, thank you, Mr. William. All right, with that, we will uh, open up to public comment on, on anything. Anything. Okay. Mrs. Walker is going to go first. Three minutes, introduce yourself. Kathy. <laughs> Hello, Kathy Walker, uh, Burke Court. First, I'd like to thank the board for approving uh, Miss Betty Ruck, Mrs. Betty Ruck. Uh, I know you don't know her probably unless you're a member of St. Thomas, but I'd like to give you a little background because we all know how hard it is to get volunteers and to get really qualified volunteers, which I know I'm very excited about. Betty has been a science teacher. Uh, she has a degree from Ohio State. Please don't hold that against her, <laughs> being in Michigan. But And she has additional year, uh, years of experience and additional um, schooling at Eastern and at Wayne State for additional hours. She's retired, uh, she's retired now. She works extensively with St. Um, Thomas. She, put, uh, she has a, a, a thorough background in tech. She knows HTML5 and CSS. And I, believe me, I took those classes and I know how hard it is. And she's very knowledgeable. She put up their own website at St. Thomas. So we really have somebody who's uh, got a great background in audiovisual. She does, she's very uh, knowledgeable with Microsoft. And I think we've got a really great person. And unfortunately, she could not be here tonight. And I wanted to extend that to you and tell, tell you that she uh, is so sorry, but she had another meeting. But again, thank you. And I look forward to working with her, as I'm sure Lauren does. Thank you. Take care. You. Any questions? Okay. Thank you, Mrs. Uh, Walker. Other 
<laughs> Mr. Clark. Legal fees, guys. Where's the legal fees? Come on. Well, I ran silly of $4,598.19. To who? Where's your hat? It's outside. No. Oh, it's right there in the chair. Yeah. You want me to put that sucker back on again? I would. That, that's okay. Yeah. <laughs> okay, here we go. The bridge, free bridge. <clears throat> it's a 35 mile an hour speed limit. Today I went across at 25. It seems like the people don't know that it's 35 miles an hour. So, except when I go across and they tailgate me, they're doing 10, because I'll drop it down. Also, when you're making a right turn, go to West River from Parkway and you go around, don't drift in the left lane. Somebody did that to me the other day. So if they drift in the left lane, I go over to the other lane, and that's not fun when the car's coming at me. Yeah, I don't know if there's, there are not lane markings. I know they're not. But they you, you can't see it. But but I'll but Chief Porcerelli is indicating there is only one lane there, widened for some of our less talented individuals, perhaps. But uh, <laughs> there's only one lane. There is not a turn lane and a and a through lane. But everybody goes on the right lane. Well, I'm I'm not. I'm just. I'm just. I'm just the reporter. That's considered only one until it's painted with a with a lane differential. That's considered one lane. So. So be careful, Woody. I don't want you getting hurt. That isn't the point. The point is everybody gets in the right lane and goes around the thing, and then you got somebody that's doing that and drifts out in the other lane that's going straight. So then there's accidents. Okay, whatever. All right. Uh, mm -mm -mm. Uh, walkers and uh, runners at night. They're wearing their black outfits. I think they're trying to lose weight, or we can't see them. But if I have to make a decision between a car coming at me and hit them, somebody's going to lose. The gas station down the street, they got the same gas, same price as the one across the bridge in the Sunoco gas station. So participate with this guy down here rather than going across the street and go around and buy his gas. Okay, here we go. Snow Hill. Can we get a cut? Not now, of course. <laughs> but uh, can we get a cut like in the fall or summer or fall? So when people go use it, they're not going through Weed City? Probably not. I don't know if we can get equipment up there to cut it. You've cut it before. They've been cut before. Okay. All right. Thank you, Mr. Duker. Thank you, Mr. Your Duker. budget. Okay. Give me summer. Okay. Pri uh, priority list for for uh, Trenton and you. Do you think anybody will ever build anything on that property of McLeod? I know they won't until it, the contamination's remediated. You'll have to dig up till hell freezes over to get it up. I don't know if technically that's uh, <laughs> how deep they're going to have to go, yeah. but it's uh, it's it it's it's a major pro it is a major problem. Yeah. And the only I I know you put on a priority list. What the, what the hell does that do for us? The, it, priority it, the priority list are the sites that are the most contaminated that will get funded for remediation first. Superfund we, sites. They got so, that black well, hole. What was the superfund? Is this yeah. still the term they use? They got that black hole over there. They don't even want to touch it. They cleaned it once. Huh? They cleaned it once. Not the black hole. I don't think they touched the black hole. Anyway, gun range. You got a mobile gun, gun range or no gun range or what is it? You, but you talked about getting a mobile one. We have nothing yet. Nothing. Okay. Bye. All right. Thank you, Mr. Clark. Uh, <laughs> other, other, other uh, questions, comments from the public present? All right. With none offered... Um, we will step to a discussion item, and I'll invite Mr. Um, what, these are one of the uh, topics that we had in our study session. Uh, Mr. Duker can just give us a, a brief uh, rundown on a project that may or may not be coming up this summer. Good evening. Just another brief update. Update: We've had um, some discussions in our previous meetings and uh, a discussion today in our study session. Uh, regarding the airport has a potential project upcoming that would involve a total rehabilitation of our primary runway, which is 422. 
Um, just a quick recap on that. We've been seeing some thermal expansion and a chemical reaction issues in the, in the pavements known as ASR. It's a chemical reaction between two of the stone or aggregates in the concrete. This is not an uncommon problem in this area. Uh, others have been seeing it too. Um, the one challenge we've been facing with this project is that the FAA is trying to move quickly with this because they've had some funding become available that they could provide us. Um, the current rates have been established. The project will be at a 95% state and federal share and a 5% local share, which would be from the airport's end. Um, again, the, the tight timetable, the FAA is hope, stipulating that the project will have to break ground. We're still trying to get clarification on what that means, but break ground in the fiscal year 2015. Um, so I would say should we move forward with the project, we're probably looking at doing some beginning stages of work, probably end of uh, this coming summer. Um, I also wanted to point out if you read the news, Detroit News or uh, Free Press, the, uh, they had articles regarding Metro Airport. Detroit Metro Airport is having a similar issue with their runway 422 as well. Um, exact same issues, and they have to re rehabilitate the entire runway, which is a much, a very costly uh, repair. Um, so it's, it's not, not uncommon in this area and, uh, and of runways of that time. I just wanted to make the board and public aware. Uh, at the end of this month, we're hoping to submit a pre application <laughs> for this for final review for the FAA. Um, the one thing that this does do is it, it's called the triggering event, any project of this size. It basically makes the airport look at operations, justification for the runway size, width, length. Um, at this time, the airport, FAA, and MDOT do not have any intentions of extending the runway or changing anything. Um, the runway would either be remain the same length as it currently is or po potentially shortened um, a little bit. And then we also have to review any obstructions that are in our approaches or our imaginary surfaces, as you would, coming into the runway. Um, so that's what we're doing in process of doing now. I uh, hope to finish it up, but we are going to get a pre-application into the FAA at the end of this month and hope to bring it back to the board soon for project approval. Okay. Um, again, the board, we got most of these, our questions answered at our study session. Are there any closeout questions for uh, Mr. Duker from the board? All right. Thank you, Mr. Duker. Thank I you. know you'll keep us updated on uh, these developments. With that, I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. Okay, I've got the motion from Trustee Budney. I'll give the second to Trustee Malvesto. Those in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed, none offered. I'll call us adjourned at uh, 837. Thanks for coming, everyone, tonight. If you're jogging at night, wear bright clothes, bring a light. Please. <laughs>